Hope everyone had enjoyed their lunch. Welcome back. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about real-time applications, developing real-time applications. At this point, I'm pretty sure everybody in the room has at least heard of WebSockets in some kind of capacity. Maybe some of you have played with it, built some sandbox apps in your free time. Uh, a small portion of you may have even gone so far as to build production-grade apps, somebody consuming your WebSocket APIs. I want to talk a little bit about a tool called Feathers.js that makes my life way, way easier when setting this stuff up. Maybe you guys can take this back uh, to whatever you do in your free time. So before we get into that, my name is Alexis Abril. I work for a company called Batovi. We have a few open source uh, projects, most noticeably the JMBC library, such as CanJS, Steel, and a few other things you see up here. I'm also the organizer of the local DallasJS meetup, so if you haven't been out, come on out, at least put yourself on the mailing list, tweet us, all that good stuff. And I'm a UTD alum, so hands up lie, hands up down, go Comets, whatever the song was, it's been a long time. All right, Feathers.js. Very simply, Feathers is a wrapper for Express. Uh, Express has made our lives really, really easy in being able to set up endpoints for your web services. Feathers takes that abstraction a bit further. There's a very, very common API when you're building, or let me rephrase, we do a lot of the same things when we're setting up web services, specifically finding a list of resources on the server, uh, getting a specific resource from the server, creating a resource from the server, so on and so forth. Feathers has developed its own kind of standard, and then it programmatically sets that up in Express for you. So if you've ever, uh, Ruby developers in the room, if you're familiar with Sinatra, Feathers is much, much closer uh, to Sinatra than Express would be you know, to Rails, let's say. So, specifically, Feathers works or revolves around this concept of service objects. Uh, it's a simple JSON object when we define a few methods here. Feathers actually has a couple of other methods. I'm just gonna talk about the main ones here. Find, this is gonna be getting a list of resources. So if you have a list of to-dos, if you're building a to-do app, this is where you get all of the to-dos. You get uh, a simple callback, excuse me, a function defined, which gets parameters in a callback. The parameters, being, the parameters in all of these is gonna be the same. It's gonna be anything you wanna filter your requests by. Maybe you only want completed to-dos. That would be in the params object. The callback is a function we can pass in. This is the function where we're actually gonna send data back to the client. We'll take a look at what this means in a second. So, let's talk about, ooh, that might be a little bit hard to read on the projector here, but this is just the to-do MVC app. Now, if we were building this from scratch today, uh, we would look at this, a designer comes to us, say, hey, this is the proposal, this is the app we want it to be, we need it to be in real time. We need a couple of service endpoints right off the bat. We're gonna need the ability to find a list of to-dos existing on the server already, Maybe we need to have a resource endpoint to create some to-dos, to update a to-do if you want to mark it completed or incomplete. Maybe you want to change the text. And maybe you want to remove a to-do. So we need all these different, very straightforward endpoints. This is what this would look like in Feathers. I'm only going to do the uh, find and create methods, only because of slide real estate. But this is... The actual service, this isn't like, you know, pseudocode or whatever, this is what it would look like in Feathers. We have a service object with a find method. We're gonna take params and callback. The commented out area is however you want to locate your to-dos. Probably gonna be some kind of database call. Uh, we're about to do a live demo, I'm just gonna store this stuff in memory. But however you want to get your to-dos, and then you just invoke this callback with the to-dos that you wanna pass back to your client. For reference, the first argument in the callback is the error object. This is by convention. This is how things are done uh, typically in Express. No reason for it other than it's by convention. And then in our create, we're gonna do something very similar. Again, we're just going to make a database call to create a to-do in this instance, and then invoke the callback with our new created to-do. Uh, to so, this is our object. That's cool, that's just a JSON object by itself. How do we get feathers to consume this type of declaration? This is our setup. I'm gonna talk about the REST API first and then I'm gonna talk about the Socket API. So feathers can set up both REST and Socket APIs, which is pretty cool. 
Again, if you're familiar with Express, this should look really, really familiar. Just swap out the word feathers for Express. If you use Express today and you want to try out feathers, you can actually just swap them out, not use any of the feathers service objects, and everything should still work. Feathers is based on Express, assuming you're using the same version of Express. So we're taking feathers. Uh, we're invoking it to create our application. We're passing in feathers.rest, which is a plugin. You always have to call .configure when you're using Express plugins. Uh, and then our middleware is just going to be the signature. In this case, slash to do's is the endpoint we want to use. And we're going to tell feathers to associate that endpoint with our to do service object. Then all we have to do is call dot listen on port uh, 3000 in this case. And we're good to go. This is a full service. This plus the object together is actually a full to do's service, which is, I think, pretty sweet. Here's the cool part. If that wasn't cool enough already. The socket setup is adding an additional plugin. One extra line of code, now we have the same service available in REST and WebSocket uh, formats, which is pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, Feather supports two main drivers. I'm using Socket.io only because I'm more familiar with it, but you can also use Primus, which if you're using Primus, they'll let you do things like use socks or whatever people are into these days. Uh, but this exposes everything we need to get this set up. Okay. I think, yeah. Uh, all of this together is kind of fun and cool. Those of you that know me, I hate putting together slides. I love live coding, so let's do some live coding right now. I think uh, today, maybe a demo of Feathers could use this room to answer one of the old, age old questions Captain versus Captain, Kirk versus Picard. We can do a little live. Uh, demo, web sockets, you're going to see different people voting and you're going to see different things respond. Just for reference, we are, I, I am a little bit on a time constraint, so I'm going to only live code the server. I have a pre-built UI, which I'll really quickly walk through, but we're going to live code the actual feathers part of this. So, oh, really quickly, uh, if you're interested, while I'm going through the live coding, if you wanted to vote, spam the, the, the actual application, I threw this up. It's called theshowdown.herokuapp.com. If you want to cast your vote right now, you can see different people voting, different people respond, and all that good jazz while we're going to live code it here at the same time. So to the editor. OK. Uh, let me blow this up a little bit. OK. So we're going to start with a simple JavaScript file. And the first thing I'm going to do, because this is just a demo, I'm not going to actually hook up like a Mongo database, but you can totally do that. I'm going to store my data store in uh, just an array. I'm going to call it captains. This will be an array. I'm going to put this in line. Forgive me, I know the tabbing is probably driving the room crazy. So I'm going to give these two objects a couple of simple properties. Uh, just an ID, a name, and a votes property. Votes. And this will be our data store. The second thing we want to create is our actual feathers service object. So I'm just going to call it the aptly and unoriginal name of service. And the two main methods we want in our voting uh, API, this is the UI we're going to build. I can just show you real quick. It's just going to be two little pictures and two voting buttons. And we're hopefully going to see something awesome happen with a graph above their faces. So. The only things we really want to change here is one, to make this possible, we need a list of captains from the server, what captains are we going to vote for, and then when we click vote, we need to send some kind of update request to the server. So those are the two API endpoints we need is find, params, and our callback, and update. Update will take ID. Uh, data, which will be in the body, whatever we want to pass in this request. Params, something in the query string if you want to limit this somehow. And callback. Then we just need to fire up our Feathers app. So require Feathers. We're going to configure, we're only going to do the rest part. I'll enable sockets here in a second. Uh, feathers.rest, and I'm going to set this up to use our captain's endpoint. That's where I want this to go. 
We're going to pass in our service and listen on port 8000 because that's a good number. OK. Cool. This is actually a functional service that does nothing because we haven't put anything in our two service object methods yet. Let's invoke find first. Blow that up a little bit more. Now find is going to be really, really simple. All we need to do is return the existing array of captains. So I'm just going to call callback null because there's no error. This is not error checked at all. And I'm just going to pass back captains. That's all I'm going to do. Now, if I really quickly look over this to make sure there's no errors, a wise man once said, nothing goes wrong when you live code at a conference ever. Uh, he didn't say that? Everything goes wrong. OK, I'm sorry. Everything goes wrong. Uh, let me server. And now, I'm going to make a curl request to our new server. Bless you. Captains. And you can see right there on the second line, we're getting an array response with our two captains, which is pretty cool. This is a simple REST server with a find setup with the data store in this JavaScript file. And it took us about 20 lines of code to write, which is pretty sweet. Let's set up our update really quick. Uh, for updates, I'm going to use a couple different little helper libraries. So I'm going to move this guy closer to the top where that should be. And I'm also going to use uh, Lodash for this, require Lodash, because they got some handy methods. Now for this, we actually need to, for updating a specific captain's votes or specific object's properties, we need to find the entity first in our data store, manipulate some properties, and then return the new updated item. So in this case, I'm going to say captain is going to be equal to whatever we find from our captain's uh, store. Uh, this will just be C. Return C.ID is triple equal to parse and ID 10. Killer. All we're doing here, if you're not familiar with Lodash, is we're searching uh, we're iterating through each uh, index of captains and executing this function. The first time this function returns true, that's going to be the, the entity, the index that we return. In this case, a, a single captain will be returned. Uh, parse int ID 10. 10 is going to be the base number we're using for integers. Just in case you're always playing around with numbers in JavaScript, please use parse int. Uh, the reason we're using parseInt in this syntax is by default our UI is going to not pass things in JSON format. It's going to pass things in uh, form URL encoded. So it's going to come back as a string, even if it's a number. It's just text being sent over the wire. So we need to get it back into a number so that way we can do our comparison on it. Now that we have our captain, I feel like that's a line from one of the Star Trek movies. Now that we have our captain, I don't know. Uh, captain.votes is it going to equal data.votes. Data is going to be the actual serialized version of the captain that the client sent us in the first place. So we're just going to make those equal to each other. This is not, if you're really going to make this app for reals, you probably want to, you know, uh, increment this on the update or have some kind of voting signature. There's a really easy way to hack this and make, you know, Captain Kirk have a million votes if you're into it. But again, live demos. So now all we need to do is invoke our callback with our updated captain. At this point, let me save this. Now we have a signature to where we can actually uh, make put requests. By default, feathers will follow uh, your HTT verb paradigms. So if you're doing, if you're creating new records, it will make post requests. If you're updating records, it'll make put requests. It's always nice to separate things out. Even if you swap put and post, uh, if that's your thing, Please use the HTTP verbs. It makes everyone's life easier later on so we can see what's going on. When I see uh, an API that has nothing but post requests, I have no idea what it's doing, or everything's a get request. It's hard for a new developer. It's always going to be hard for a new developer to understand your code base. It's really hard if you made everything look the same. So uh, we're also going to use one other thing. I'm going to use uh, body parser. I'm going to call it parser, require body parser. 
those are, uh, for those of you that are familiar with the latest version of Express, I'm not sure if they did this in 03 or 04, but in one of the versions, they broke out a lot of the functionality that you had baked into Express into different plugins. Body Parser is one of them. So uh, for this example, we're going to use form URL encoded requests. But let's say you did want to use JSON requests. You could use uh, Body Parser to set up as middleware. So you could say use, and then parser.json. This will allow the, us to consume these kinds of requests. I'm not doing that for this example. We're going to use URL encoded, extended, true. This just gives us all the options in the QS library uh, for you node developers out there. Move that up a little bit. And then the final thing is we need to actually serve static files. This is a server that isn't serving anything right now. It can take curl requests, but we probably want to serve HTML files. So again, all the methods that are available on Express by default are going to be available on feathers. So I'm just going to use <laughs> not feathers, feathers. Feathers.static. Dir name. Uh, client. And I believe that's everything. Let's try it out. Oh, let's start the server before we try it out. OK, let me vote for Kirk. Sweet. We got a pretty little graph. And when I cast votes, the graph is updating. That's cool. None of this is WebSocket based. This is still REST based. It's just the graph is updating via live binding. If you're familiar with any of the big libraries, Angular, React, uh, Can, Ember, they're all going to do this kind of stuff. But that's not the cool part yet. I'm going to copy this URL. I'm going to go over to Canary, where I've conveniently set up another window here. And watch these side by side. Now, if I cast votes in the right area, you'll notice the right area changes, but the left area does not. This is your typical REST application. If you have multiple users, you want some kind of push notification. The, the data is being set on the server. I can just refresh the left side, and it should, yep, should have the same data. So we know the data is persisting. It's just not being messaged uh, back to the clients. So for this, all we need to do is configure. Now, uh, note, again, the client is pre-built. I'm going to show you the code here in a second. But this is all set up. You have to have a client that's ready to consume WebSockets, not just having a server that uh, sets it up. So feathers.socket.io, because that's the plugin I'm going to use. And I'm going to restart my server. We're good. I'm going to refresh these pages so they can both get our socket connections. Now, if I click on the right side, you can see both sides are responding simultaneously, which is pretty cool when you watch the little bouncing animations. So just to wrap this part really quickly up, even with the data store, let me make this smaller so it fits on one screen. Even with the data store and some gratuitous white space and tabbing, we have 32 lines of code, and we have a fully functional socket and REST server setup, which I think is really, really awesome. Uh, this makes my life easier when I'm doing, uh, if I'm doing a prototype demo for a client, I say, hey, let's make it real time. And immediately, everybody thinks, oh, that sounds like a lot of work. I don't really know what that entails. These are words that scare me. Let's stay away from it. It costs money. If you can throw this kind of stuff together really, really quickly, these make for really exciting demos. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit more practical side to it here in a second. Uh, really quickly for inquiring minds, uh, this particular client is written in CanJS. I'm going to show you a little bit of how we wired it up. It's not to say you should or shouldn't use it. I'm biased, uh, and I think you should. But that's totally cool. Uh, for anything, any kind of model abstraction layer, uh, I'm going to write a quick client, and then I'm going to show you the, the actual client. For our case, we have a captain model, which in typical CanJS, I can blow this up, is just going to be this resource uh, captains. And this will let you do things like that's, by the way, that's, that's all the code you need, those three lines for CanJS model layers. Then you can do stuff like this captain dot find all captains with no parameters function. Captains. 
here's the list of captains. And you can do stuff like, if you have an individual captain, C, or var C equals new captain, captain, c.save. The model layer sets you, lets you set up stuff like this. This is just CanJS's REST model layer. To make it uh, real time, Feathers has a plugin called Can Feathers, where you can just, now it's real time. So if you're using CanJS, it's a really easy switch over. If you're not using CanJS, these plugins just need to be written for Feathers. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with Firebase, there's a really, really good talk on Angular with Firebase and the plugin called Angular Fire. That plugin could exist for Feathers for each. There could be you know, a Feathers Angular and a Feathers Ember. Uh, they just currently don't exist. Uh, the developers that work on Feathers also work on CanJS, so we're all biased. But those plugins could easily exist because Feathers is made to be agnostic. It's just a really cool server library. This is kind of the gist of what we're doing. The actual model has a few helper methods on it. Uh, when you click an up, when you click vote, it's just gonna increment the votes by one and then call save on that particular model. I don't know if that's necessarily a good or bad way to do things. I just, it seemed like a good idea in the middle of the night when I was writing the demo. So bear with me. And then we have a couple of abstraction methods for our pretty graphs. Uh, a way to serialize your data in the model layer. That way your UI layer, uh, your UI layer can just do stuff like this. We can just say, we can get our list of captains and just call 2pi data. So it's just a, basically a serialization method we've created. So that way anywhere you use captains in this application, you can just get graph data of whatever format you want. In this case, it's all pie charts, so it's all good. Um, but this is all where this is coming from. Feathers.js, it actually just went, those are green, I don't know if they look yellow. They're actually, everything's passing. Uh, the projector may look a little yellow. Um, this actually just went version 1.0 over the weekend, which is pretty cool. It's been in testing now for, ooh, I don't know, almost, I wanna say almost a year. I don't know, not quite a year, but almost a year. First official release, it's a really, really small library. David Luke is the author of this particular library. Fork it, play with it, see what you like, see if there's something missing that you would prefer to have. Uh, if you check it out, even on the homepage, there's a real-time demo you can interact with to-dos in the homepage of the app. That's the code for it on the right side, server and client, which is pretty cool. You don't have to use, you don't have to use any framework. I said Angular, Ember, Can, all these uh, really cool frameworks because they have live binding template rendering. But if you just want to emit socket events with socket.io, you can totally do this natively too if that's, you know, whatever you're into. This is made to set those things up really, really easily and really, really simply. Uh, I guess nobody got to this one. All right, Picard should win anyways. Um, if you're interested, all of this code is available on, uh, on GitHub, next to Sabril, front porch IO, including the slides. This is all available right there, let me minimize that. Uh, so you can clone it and check out, see what I did to make this happen. And if you're interested in many flavors of this type of app, we have the full version, which is, oh, it's kind of cut off there, but it's a dig style demo. Uh, for those of you who come out to the Dallas JS meetups, you've probably seen this uh, a few times, but this is a ton, and Khan is winning now. Khan wasn't winning before, so somebody really had it in there. But all kinds of different commanders. We wrote four different flavors of this app. There's an AMD version. There's a Feathers version with WebSockets. There's a, uh, a base version, just like an intro to CanJS. And there is a Can component version, which is our approach to web components. Not web components, but you know our flavor of it. So you can check out basically a more complex version of to-do MVC uh, with a couple different approaches. Instead of different framework comparisons, different approach comparisons. This is all available on the Dallas.js repo. We also have a couple of other apps that you can't really make out on this one, but it's a chat app and, uh, oh, the website. Don't worry about the website app. 
So if you're into real-time chats in less than 30 lines of code, that one is up there as well. OK. Um, one really quick practical area. Not sure how I'm doing on time, but I'm going to keep going for a minute. Uh, one typical architecture you have when you're building your RESTful apps uh, is you're going to have some client, then a RESTful interface, and then some kind of data store behind the scenes in some way or shape or fashion. So WebSockets is cool and fun, and Node is cool, but the practicality of implementing it at your uh, place of work is maybe not always a real solution you can do. So the part that Feathers makes really, really nice about this, it's really easy to insert this as a middleman. In other words, set up, a, keep your legacy REST service. Don't rewrite, don't reinvent the wheel. You want to keep your security, you want to keep your authentication, you want to keep those things that have spent years and years in maturity. What you can do is set up Feathers in between your, uh, your client and your REST service, maybe not even for the entire client, maybe just for a new feature or a new page. So your client will make requests to your Feathers service, which in turn, all it's going to do, just imagine in this callback, and go back to our server. Whoa, big text. Imagine in our callback, right here, let's say the update method. Rather than update some data here, I'm going to comment this out. This turns around and makes a request, make request to real REST server. It just does a pass through. It's going to turn around and call your actual RESTful client. This makes your Feathers client do basically nothing except you're going to start emitting socket events, which means you get real time with very, very low overhead. It is going to be an extra HTTP request for the server, not for the client. The client will know no difference. So this is pretty cool. This is actually going to reduce, this is the hard, this is the exciting part and it's the hard part for people to grasp. This is actually going to reduce stress on your server. Because people, there's two things that are going to happen. One, people are going to stop refreshing to see updates. They're going to get those updates from the Feather service instead of refreshing and getting a whole new data set. And two, on a WebSocket request, you're not going to send the headers every time. You only send headers to initiate the uh, socket uh, being opened. On an AJAX request, you're going to send those headers every single time, which is just more text across the wire. So there's a couple of nice for free kind of benefits. Uh, these are all cool things. Captain Picard likes it. So check out Feathers, feathersjs.com. Uh, feel free, follow me on Twitter, because that's a thing. And I think I've run out of words. Thank you. <laughs>